When I started researching Max Miller's family tree, I wasn't expecting to find so many twists and turns and be left with so many questions. Love, intrigue, and oysters? Hello everybody, I am Jared Ross, a genie vlogger, and on today's video, we will be looking into the family tree of Max Miller. Max Miller runs the channel Tasting History with Max Miller, where Max explains how to cook all sorts of different dishes, often using historical recipes, while also discussing the history behind the dish. When I first contacted Max about being on this series and tracing his family tree, he was extremely excited and quickly agreed to be on the program. Max didn't have a family tree built out, so we hopped on a call and talked through what he knew so that I could build a basic family tree. I then decided that I was going to first focus on Max's maternal grandmother, Virginia James. The daughter of Harold Holtz and Florence Kelly, Max's grandmother was born Virginia Holtz in New York in 1923, but the family moved to Phoenix sometime in the late 1930s. Virginia attended Phoenix Union High School and then went on to Phoenix Junior College for a few years before attending Arizona State College, which became Arizona State University in 1958. During this time in college, Robert Paul James, Max's grandfather, would propose to Virginia while serving in the U.S. Army. Robert and Virginia obtained their marriage license in August 1945 and then married two years later on June 15, 1947, just a month after Virginia received her degree from Arizona State College. Virginia began teaching at elementary schools around Phoenix starting as a second grade teacher at Creighton Elementary. But then she hopped around to a few other elementary schools, all the while giving birth to multiple children, including Max's mother. In 1956, Virginia began working at Sunny Slope Elementary, where her sister Florence had also been teaching since 1949. Virginia would stay at Sunny Slope until 1982, when she and Florence decided to retire together. The school yearbook put in a special dedication section to Virginia and Florence for their retirement. And this really exemplified how appreciated these two were as teachers at Sunny Slope. Florence would pass away only seven years later in 1989, but Virginia would stay in Phoenix until she passed away in 2011. Something that I started to realize as I was going along this research was that Virginia's father, Harold, didn't seem to be in the picture in Phoenix. In the 1930 census, the whole family was living together with Harold in New York. But in the 1940 census, the family is in Phoenix without Harold. Virginia's mother Florence is shown as married in the 1940 census, but by the 1950 census, she is listed as divorced. Further records, including Harold's World War II draft registration, indicate Harold had stayed in New York until his death in 1965. I think the most likely explanation is that Harold and Florence separated, causing Florence to then move to Phoenix, but the divorce wasn't finalized until sometime after 1940. Something else of interest was Harold and Florence's marriage in 1918. They had obtained their marriage license on March 13, 1918, and then married just 10 days later on the 23rd. But what makes this timing especially interesting is that Florence gave birth to twins named Florence and Elizabeth less than seven months later on October 16, 1918, although Elizabeth would die less than a month later. But this meant that Florence was about two months pregnant at the wedding. Was this a shotgun wedding? Based on the evidence, it seemed the most likely scenario, but unfortunately, we may never know. I decided to shift my focus and start looking further into Harold, but it wasn't going to be easy. Records on Harold were sparse, and even trying advanced techniques to try to find some records was proving very difficult. Finding his World War I draft, I was able to learn that Harold worked for the Individual Drinking Cup Company which was headquartered in New York City. 
The individual drinking cup company made disposable paper cups intended for single use, something which was recently invented with the intent to provide a sanitary new cup at water fountains. The product was first marketed as health cups, but later became known as Dixie Cups. It's unknown how long Harold stayed at the company, although in the 1920 census, Harold was listed as a foreman at a factory, which may have been the individual drinking cup company, but we don't know enough to be certain. In the same 1920 census entry, Harold's mother Elizabeth is also living with the family and working as a cook at a high school, giving us our first glimpse at the next generation. This also gave us Elizabeth's age, thus allowing us to find her in the 1910 and 1900 censuses, along with Harold, but no father for Harold, and the censuses showed why. In each of these censuses, Elizabeth is listed as a widow, but in 1900, her youngest child was eight months old, meaning Harold's father likely died in 1899. So my next step, identify Harold's father. By building out the tree and then looking at records connected to Harold's siblings, I found the marriage record for Harold's sister, Lily Mae Holtz, which listed her parents as Lizzie Curry and Holbrook Holtz. This seemed to match up because I had also found in the 1900 census Elizabeth's mother, Sadie Curry, living in the house with her as well. Using this information, I then found the marriage index for Holbrook Holtz and Elizabeth Curry on December 29th, 1887, indicating that Holbrook was likely the father of Harold Holtz. And now that we had the father of Harold being Holbrook Holtz, it was time to look into Holbrook. The first thing I found was an 1890 directory entry showing Holbrook worked as a policeman and lived in Brooklyn. Yet as I looked for more information on Holbrook, I realized something odd was going on here. I expected Holbrook to have died around 1899 as indicated by the information in the censuses, but what I ended up finding was that he actually had lived until 1921. So did that mean that I had something wrong here? Is it possible that maybe I'm mixing up multiple men with the same or similar names? I tried to see if I could identify anyone else around a similar age and having a similar name to Holbrook Holtz, but I couldn't find anything that even came close. I decided that I was going to continue the research assuming that Holbrook was the true father and see what was Holbrook's life like after 1900. In 1905, at the age of 43, Holbrook married a woman named Katie Bright, a 23-year-old Irish immigrant. Just a year after their marriage, Holbrook was then named Constable of North Hempstead in Nassau County and can then be found in a slew of articles related to his work. An article from the Brooklyn Daily Eagle in 1910 gives us a glimpse at Holbrook in a photograph in front of the Nassau County Supreme Court, along with an amazing description. Holbrook Holtz, who hails from Port Washington, is the giant of the official squad. He towers over six feet in his stockings and weighs between 225 and 250 pounds. Holbrook's career as the constable didn't last much longer because in August 1911, he had suffered what sounded like a heart attack or stroke, complaining of feeling ill and his right arm going numb before falling unconscious. By October, he was doing better, but the lack of articles afterwards seemed to indicate that this was the end of his career. And in the 1920 census, it even shows that he was not working at the time. Holbrook then passed away in 1921, still married to his second wife, Katie. Now, while all of this information was extremely helpful in learning more about Holbrook and creating a timeline, what I really needed was more information on Holbrook before 1900, but I did not expect that to be an easy task. First off, the Holt's name was very common in the community and throughout Long Island, mostly because they all descended from the Hulse family who had settled in Long Island back in the 17th century. So I decided to actually focus on Holbrook's first name because that was actually a bit more unique of a name in the area. I decided to try a few name manipulation techniques where I would change the spelling of the name, but trying to keep it somewhat phonetically similar. Looking for things like Holbrook, Holbrook, Olbrook, and so on. 
Through this method, I was able to find an 1880 census and an 1870 census for an old Brooke Johnson of a correct age living in the house of Edward and Mary Johnson. They even live next door to a Halt's family. But this was odd. Why would Holbrook change from Johnson to Halt's? Being that I hadn't found anything else even close, I decided to look up other records on Edward and Mary. I quickly found them in the 1900 census living with Lily M. Holtz, Holbrook's daughter, which seemed to indicate we were on the right track. So now it was time to learn more about the Johnson family, or were they the Holtz family? Edward Johnson was born about 1835 and worked as an oyster planter in North Hempstead, something extremely common throughout the entire community. Just a quick scan of the census shows how common and also shows the many halts in the area. Holbrook took up oyster work as a teenager, possibly even learning as just a young child, but by 1880, at the age of 18, Holbrook was listed as working as an oyster planter. And this connection to oysters is why Max released a video today about oysters. So be sure to go check that out once you finish this video. This was quite a time to be working in the oyster industry and especially in North Hempstead. In the 1870s, the Hempstead oysterman community was fighting with the government, which had just renewed a law from 1865 that limited oyster beds to three acres and limited where beds could be planted. Many oyster planters violated these laws, calls for boycotts from other planters gained traction, and some oyster planters even began to unionize. Another major issue were oyster pirates, thieves who specialized in poaching oysters. While a serious issue in North Hempstead and throughout Long Island, oyster pirates were a serious problem up and down the entire East Coast. Oyster pirates were an especially bad issue in Maryland and Virginia during the 1860s and continued to get worse into the 1870s and 1880s leading to what has been called the Oyster Wars. The most famous battle being from 1882 when Virginia Governor William E. Cameron chased a group of oyster pirates, eventually engaging with them and then capturing them. All of this would have likely been big news to Holbrook and his family and the entire community of North Hempstead, and my guess is, is that a lot of them were cheering on the Virginia governor chasing down these oyster pirates. But at some point in the 1880s, Holbrook made his way from working with oysters to working in law enforcement. But the question remains, were Edward and Mary actually Holbrook's biological parents, or were they something else? Looking at the 1900 census again, something odd that sticks out is that Mary Johnson is indicated as having no children, meaning Holbrook had to have been adopted by her, or he was her stepson and a biological son of Edward. But multiple records, including the 1900 census, indicate they had been married since about 1855. So it was more likely that if Holbrook was adopted, it was by both Edward and Mary. So did that mean that Holbrook was actually born a Holtz and that's why he went by Holbrook Holtz for his adult life? Or maybe was there a different reason why he didn't go by the Johnson name? I decided to consult with genealogist Michael Waz and Caitlin Hollander of Hollander Waz Heritage Services, both of whom have extensive experience researching families in the New York area. Hi, I'm Michael Waz from Hollander Waz Jewish Heritage Services, and we do a lot of work in the New York area and have a very deep familiarity in particular with the New York City Municipal Archives. The first step that we took when Jarrett uh, contacted us was to look at what documents that we could actually trace to the family based off of the names that we knew. The first document that we reviewed was the 1887 marriage record between Holbrook Holtz and Elizabeth Curry. The record shows Holbrook is from Port Washington, is 25 years old, that this is his first marriage, and that he is a boatman, likely referring to his work as an oyster planter. His father's name is Lorenzo Holtz, and his mother's maiden name was not known. Looking into Lorenzo, we did find that he had served in the Union Army, and subsequently deserted the Union Army. He married a few years afterwards, so it is likely that Holbrook was born out of wedlock, and then Lorenzo's sister, 
Mary Johnson, nay Holtz, adopted Holbrook while Lorenzo was off fighting for the Union in the Civil War. Now back to the marriage record. The bride is Elizabeth Curry, she is 22 years old, lives in Brooklyn, and her parents are a certain John Curry and Cecilia White. This does indeed correlate with the 1900 census, which shows Elizabeth's mother as Sadie Curry. We have seen in the past that Sadie Cecilia can sometimes be names used together or as nicknames. And then we look for Harold Holtz and try to locate his birth record. On the later documents, he's very consistent about when he was born and where he was born. And so we looked and lo and behold, on the same day that he claims that he was born, was born a Harold Donaldson, the son of Harold Donaldson and his wife, Elizabeth Curry. The name actually sounded familiar because I had seen it in the census entries for the family. But did this mean that Harold Danielson was the true father and Holbrook Holtz was not? So I asked Michael, who was this Harold Donaldson or Danielson? So Harold Danielson is quite an interesting character as we could from our research. The first record that we have identified for him conclusively is when he joins the U.S. Navy in the 1880s. And then a couple of years later, there's another record of re-enlistment that makes it clear in both cases that he is from Arendelle, Norway. When he first was living in America, he appears to have been living in Providence, Rhode Island, on the Norway end. We have not been able to locate a birth record, but he is very consistent that he is from Arendelle. But the next record that we have of him is on the birth of Harold Holtz, who is also known as Harold Danielson Holtz. Now, what is interesting and led us to question what exactly is going on here is that we know at the time that Elizabeth Curry is legally married to Holbrook Holtz of Fort Washington on Long Island. And in the 1900, we see Lizzie Holtz living with her four kids and mother together, and she claims that she is a widow. Well, in this time period, even until, you know, the 1940s and 1950s and beyond, it wasn't too uncommon for a woman who was separated or divorced from her husband to claim that she was widowed because that was a more fashionable, a nicer way to put things and that questions wouldn't be asked. From the censuses from 1900 forward until the end of their lives, except for the 1920 census, it seems that Elizabeth Curry and Harold Danielson were residing together. There are also several newspaper announcements announcing their travels, that they've gone off to certain places, including one such trip to Florida in the 1910s. Her death certificate from New Jersey shows that her husband was an Otto Holtz and her parents were a Peter Danielson and Celia Germanson from Rhode Island, which also didn't quite jive with the death certificate for Harold Danielson, which also listed his father as a Harold Danielson. There is also the contradiction with the marriage of Elizabeth to Holbrook in which she states her parents are John Curry and Cecilia White. So with all of these different contradicting records, I had to ask Michael, what was his opinion about all of this? Based on all of these records and articles, we start to think that Elizabeth and Harold Yellison weren't brother and sister, but actually that they were lovers pretending to be siblings so that they wouldn't be questioned as to why a married woman would be living and traveling with an unmarried man. In Harold Danielson's obituary, it is noted that he was bereaved by the loss of his beloved sister. You don't usually see that type of a sibling connection. It does happen rarely, so it can't be discounted. But in this time period, this is also pretty uncommon language to be used. Adding in the fact that Harold Holtz's full name is actually Harold Danielson Holtz, if our hypothesis is true, it is possible that Harold himself may have been aware that his biological father was Harold Danielson, the uncle, but that he was also legally the son of Holbrook Holtz of Long Island. While we don't have anything yet that can confirm our hypothesis, it seems to be the most likely scenario. Even with all of this information, we still have a lot of questions. Was Holbrook the father of Harold Holtz, or was it Harold Danielson, or Otto Holtz? Was Elizabeth the Danielson, or Curry? What was the nature of the relationship between Elizabeth and Harold Danielson? 
Were they siblings or were they lovers? It was obvious that solving this mystery was going to take a lot more research, but we decided we weren't going to rely just on the paper trail anymore. It was time to utilize DNA. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out this video right here where I trace another YouTuber's family tree. Thank you to my Patreon patrons and YouTube members.